You. It's you. Simple answer is you. What makes you a furry is you. So I'm not about to sit here and usually for these speed draws, I'll like define what I'm talking about. But for this instance, I'm not gonna define what a furry is as I did explain it in my last video of my ex was a furry. Um, if you did not see that, please go check it out. It'll be in the link in the description. It'll be at the end of the video. Um, if I can figure out how to do end cards, I definitely will set it up so you could click on that. But um, otherwise, yeah, what makes you a furry is you. And I'm kind of using this speed draw as a way to basically do a follow-up video of my ex was a furry. And not specifically talking about him anymore because no, I've no, I don't want to talk about him. I just want to talk about furries and furry, you know, the furry community and stuff like that in general. And what better way to do that with a speed draw where I get to draw my own fursona? And um, you guys should realize or know that this actually isn't the first time I have drawn a fursona. The first time I did draw a fursona was when I was still with my ex. But um. Anyway, at the time of that video's conception of my ex was a furry, like back then, just hearing the term furry or seeing characters, seeing anthropomorphic characters like it, it just, it triggered me. It really did because back in the day, I had a lot of self-esteem and issues wrapped up in basically um, furries because of my ex and if you if you can't tell I'm you I'm already stumbling over my words because this is actually a topic a little bit more um, personal with me like more intimate with me so I'm like oh how do I how do I talk about this and, and not derp and so it's really hard for me to talk a little bit more naturally so you got just give me a second here just hold up there's there's a lot to unpack and I'm trying to unpack it in a good way in, you know, in a good way, so oh, bear with me here. But yeah, back when I first started production of My Ex Was a Furry it was like two years ago. Um, if you didn't read the description of my video, I kind of talk a little bit about it, but otherwise I'll just say it here. Yeah, that was over two years ago, back in 2018. Also back when I tried to do a duo YouTube channel with a good friend of mine, and I still love them to bits, they probably are still watching it, and if they are, hi Telsaria, you're still amazing and I love you, and I hope you're able to c continue your amazing creative journey and get your goals and whatever you wish to do, I would love to see later. But anyway, yeah, those two years ago, just from then to now, like, I've realized that I have basically healed to a point that now anytime I hear the term furry, anytime I see furry characters, anytime I see anything in relation to furries and the topics, I don't, I don't become triggered anymore. I don't become so triggered and tense and uncomfortable and pent up because that tells me that I have moved on from that old part of my life. I've moved on and if anything if it weren't if it weren't for um fellow youtubers that i watch people like cat zoon and chip flake and heck even like a lot of vivzy pops characters like they've really helped me overcome this idea of just being so uncomfortable not this idea but they've basically helped me heal they've helped me um, become a better... Ah, uh, that, that's not what I want to say. See, I'm, I'm stumbling over words. Bear with me. I'm so sorry. I apologize. This is, this is a different kind of tone of video than what I originally wanted it to be, and I think it's because I have very personal ties to it. But anyway, if it weren't for those people that I watch and follow and their work and what they do, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have helped my healing process. It's because of people out there and realizing, hey, I actually have met people that deal with, you know, anthropomorphic like characters and beings, and I don't know if they themselves are like their sonas are they actually identify themselves or see themselves as furries or, or not, but um, if they do, that's cool, and if they don't, that's cool too. But uh, about this drawing that you see in the background, before I get too much into it, 
talking about it. Um, I'll go back to what I was stating previously. Yes, I did have an old one, and I'm gonna show it right here. Ugh. Ugh. Ugh, the cringe. Ugh, ugh, I don't like it. And the biggest reason why I don't like it is because it was it's not me. It doesn't feel like me at all. I remember creating this solely to try to appeal to my furry ex, trying to look more attractive to him. I wasn't creating this Sona for myself, I was creating it for him. And that is just, that's just depressing when I think about it. So that's why I took this, this old drawing and I'm like, you know what? No, scrapping it, shoo, gone. I am recreating my own fursona, and I don't know if you could really call it a fursona because um, this is more bird-like. And it actually, um, if you are in my inner circles, you know that my family gives me a nice, nice fun nickname by Screech Owl, or just how is that owl doing in general? We just have fun little nicknames and stuff for each other, and I always grew up being called a Screech Owl. I can't remember why, and I think it's because it probably has something to do with my voice and how high-pitched I can get. So I honestly think that's why I get called Screech Owl a lot. So I was like, hey, I kind of want to draw a fursona that's like an owl, that's like me. So I was like, I am going to go and run with this. And honestly, if it wasn't for um, a character like Stolas, I would have no idea where to begin to drawing. Because if you couldn't tell from my old drawing to this new one I'm doing, I... Oh man, I gotta give props to any furry artists out there, or just any artists who can do anthropomorphic characters in general, because... I mean, back in the day when I, you know, when I was with my ex and stuff, like I took things too literal. I didn't really think about characterizing any of these type of anthro creatures or characters. I just, I was too busy in like the realism. I had to make sure the proportions were right. I had to make sure that the markings were right. I had to make sure that the look of it and feel of it was right. And that obviously shows that this old drawing that I have of my old fursona is definitely just, ugh, it's garbage to me. I don't like it. But that's why I like this new one where literally I am stylizing the heck out of it. I am just running around with proportions and ideas and whatnot and I'm stylizing it. I am just flying and being free. And yes, with the colors too, which you will probably easily see. I don't care. I'm just gonna go crazy with the colors. But anyway, yeah, bottom line, what I really want to talk about in this video. Now I've got the past stuff out of the way, where I'm not going to discuss any more of that. I'm not going to discuss any more of that except for way back in the day, even two years ago when I first made My Ex Was a Furry, when it first started production, I was very much so triggered around the idea of any anthro characters, anytime I heard the word furry, anytime I got reminded of something, towards it, yes, it triggered me, and it's because I wasn't healed. I wasn't as healed as I was two years ago than I am today. I have grown so much, I feel so proud of myself. But anyway, that's what made me come to talk about bottom line, is you get to define yourself as a furry. You get identify, uh, thank you speech. You get to define yourself and you get to identify yourself. Whatever you want to call it, it's up to you. It is totally up to you because I think I've just seen too many things. I'm going to talk about two unpopular opinions where people will literally say, Hey, if you're like this or you do this, then you're a furry. And <laughs> I've gone down this personal journey and I've come out of it and kind of looked around and was like, You know what? Nah, that's just not me. Sorry, guys. Not me, and I'm pretty sure there are people that are hearing this. There's gonna be somebody out there that's got all the charts and all of the conspiracy theories and being like, if you see Akemi's work from this date to this date and blah blah blah, so clearly this means that she is a fur- You know what? I am not about to sit here and invest my time trying to convince you. I am just telling straight a fact with a grain of salt, I'm not a furry. I just don't identify it. I don't see myself with it. I just, nope, that's just not me. Now, I will be open to the idea that maybe this could change. Maybe this could change a couple of years down the road. Who knows? I don't know. I can't see into the future. But yeah, I'm saying right here as of 
you know, late September 2020, I don't see myself as a furry. And that's okay. That is okay. Now, my unpopular opinions. Unpopular opinion number one. I got two of them. Unpopular opinion one. You can be attracted to anthropomorphic characters, romantically or not, and not be a furry. Now, this is really, this really has a lot of interwoven intertwinings with my personal history, because I kind of was intimately traumatized with how my ex was so hooked to basically the fetish side of this community and these kinds of characters that it, it took a huge hit to my self-esteem, it made me feel terrible, I had a lot of self, like, um, uh, I don't know what the word is called, I was gonna say degradation, but I don't know if that's the right word, um, I had, I'll just, I had low self-esteem about myself, about my image, about who I was because of that relationship, especially coming out of that relationship. So you can imagine that a few years ago, during my healing process and stuff, when there was a character, I can't remember who at the, at the time, um, there's a new character now, but I'm not gonna say it just because I don't want to, but um, a few years ago, there was a character that was anthropomorphic, and I literally became triggered because I was like, Hey, I kind of like this character's personality and the way that they are, and they just kind of vibe with me. And then suddenly, I like stopped and was like, Oh no! Oh god! I think I like this anthropomorphic character! Does this mean I'm a furry? Like, I went through the rabbit hole and back again of internal torment. And I'm gonna use an example. I'm gonna use, um, if you guys don't know, Breath of the Wild has a fish prince, a red fish prince character by the name of Sidon, I think. And, um, I have a, uh, friend who basically feels my pain in that retrospect, where they're, they just, they're not into the whole, like, furry thing or whatever, and this character came around, just f just dropped from the sky, at least that's what it felt like, and then suddenly they're sitting there and they're like wanting to rip and tear their hair out, like, oh my god, what kind of monster am I? Like, oh! And so it took me a long time to kind of come back to myself and realize, hey, you know what? Just because I like this character doesn't make me this label or this whatever, I don't know if I would say label, identity, definition, whatever you want to call it, this just doesn't make me this. This does not equate to this. There's correlations, yes, but not in every case, it's causation, I want to say, if that makes any sense. So yeah, unpopular opinion number one, you can be attracted to anthropomorphic characters romantically or not, and not be a furry, that's me. Okay, now on popular opinion two, you can create anthro-like characters and not be a furry. Now, my unpopular opinion, I was gonna have three. I was gonna talk about something about like fursuits, but because I myself don't really know what that whole process is or fur fursuits in general, and I like, to me, I just see fursuits as like a way to put on a costume, like cosplaying, just designing a really cool, outfit and putting it on and if you really see yourself as that individual when you wear that suit that's more of like you know that is like your skin sort of then that's cool that's awesome but that's just not me and I'm not gonna really go into depth about it because I don't have a first-hand opinion about it but I do have a first-hand opinion about this other unpopular opinion number two that yes you can create anthro like characters and not be a furry and Oh man, <laughs> I will never forget when I first started creating uh, cotton, if you guys don't know, yes, I'm currently obsessed with drawing cotton. She is my comfort character and I don't care, people can fight me. But um, when I first started creating my character cotton, um, my sister came up to me and they're teasing because she knows exactly what I went through. She knows the kind of hassle and, you know, internal strife that I've gone through with my ex that when she saw me drawing cotton, she was like, oh, 
Are you drawing furries now? Are you making a furry? And like, I just had to stop and give her the most WTF face I could manage. Just disbelief and just like, really? Cause I was just, I wasn't about to argue. I was just done. And she laughed because <laughs> she knew she was gonna get it, a reaction out of me, but she totally laughed. And thinking back about it, I, yeah, I kind of laugh at it too, where I'm just like, I just, I'm done because it's like I'm not about to sit here and argue you know where I stand on this so really but yeah so you can make these characters and you could still not identify yourself as a furry and I almost want to say maybe that's kind of like when you think about it like I feel like a lot of people see that kind of level when it comes to I think I want to believe I don't I'm pretty sure he's dead by now uh, Walt Disney and how he created so many anthropomorphic like characters that there are some people that are sitting in the background like, dude, I think Walt Disney was a furry. And then there are other people that are like raising their eyebrows like, uh, no, I don't think he was a furry at all. So because he's dead and we can't get like the one on one basis of like, hey, yo, you a furry or no, <laughs> I don't, you know, people are going to be debating about that until the cows come home. But yeah, I believe on popular opinion too, yeah, you can create anthro-like characters and not be a furry. That's me. That is totally me. I agree with both unpopular opinions that you can be, first, you can be attracted to anthropomorphic characters, romantically or not, and not be a furry, and two, unpopular opinion number two, you can create anthro-like characters and still not be a furry. There you go, period.com. I rest my case. So, yeah, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, my amazing peeps, just believe in yourself and, you know, don't let peer pressure and basically comments, whatever it is, don't let others try to pigeonhole you into thinking you're something that maybe you're not comfortable with, or maybe you just genuinely down at the bottom, you kind of don't believe. Now, it's okay if you're in a stage of like, there you have doubt going on, you're kind of curious, you don't know what to believe or what to think, that is okay if you don't fully know. But I think what I'm really trying to stress is that whatever people say about you, their opinions about you and what they believe and what they think and who they think you are, just take it with a grain of salt. And that's a lot easier said than done. I would know it's taken me years to heal and it's taken even longer to realize you know what i can stand on my own just fine i see you over there formulating opinions i understand that you're gonna think this way no matter what i'd say or do but at the end of the day your opinions are just opinions and i believe that i myself am not a furry and there you go rest my case so, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had fun, um, diving into this plethora of shenanigans with me. I'm still stumbling over my words just because it's so hard. I, I do this kind of off script. If you guys don't know, I kind of just write a note card and jot down points. Otherwise, I will go off on tangents and I'll never come back to what I originally was talking about. But thank you so much for sticking with me here. Thank you for listening to me talk and ramble on about this. And um, yeah, give it a like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. And remember, I also have other socials that you can interact and engage with me on. Currently, the one that I'm most active on is Twitter. And I don't know, I just, I, I just like tweeting, I guess. It's become an addiction, and I swear I'll stop, but it just hasn't happened yet. But yes, there's Twitter, there's DeviantArt, there's Instagram, and of course there's this YouTube channel where I post all my videos. And then, newly, there actually is a Tumblr, and I don't know what I'm really gonna do with Tumblr. I feel like Tumblr is just another way for me to post art, but if there is one thing on Tumblr that I feel like you can't do on the other social platforms is you can ask me or my characters any question, and I just might respond to them with a drawn response. So, that aside, thank you everybody so much for watching, and remember everybody, be awesome, be you, Akemi, out.